Hi, my name is Jason Sostek, and I'm an internist in the Division of General Internal Medicine at Mayo Clinic Rochester, and I'm one of the co-authors of cannabinoid hyperemesis, a case series of 98 patients, an article which will be appearing in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings in February of 2012. This article is the largest case series uh, to date in the literature looking at patients with cannabinoid hyperemesis. All patients were seen at Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota, and were included in this study if they had one, recurrent cyclic nausea and vomiting, two, no other explanation for their symptoms, and three, cannabis use preceded the onset of symptoms. Of 1,571 patients, 98 patients met inclusion criteria. Based on the review of these patients, we developed major and supportive criteria for the diagnosis of cannabinoid hyperemesis. Essential to the diagnosis of cannabinoid hyperemesis is chronic cannabis use, with major criteria including 1. Severe cyclic nausea and vomiting, 2. Abdominal pain, typically periumbilical or epigastric, 3. Chronic cannabis use, 4. Resolution of symptoms after cannabis cessation, and 5. Relief of symptoms with hot water bathing, a finding that occurred in 91% or 52 out of the 61 patients who had this information available. Cannabis is known for its antiemetic properties, so how can cannabis cause acyclic vomiting syndrome? Our findings are not intended to suggest that, that cannabis or cannabis derivatives do not provide some patients with relief from nausea and vomiting, nor are we suggesting that everyone who uses cannabis or cannabis derivatives will develop cyclic nausea and vomiting. Why some patients who use cannabis develop this syndrome of cyclic nausea and vomiting is unclear, and we speculate that this may be regulated through the hypothalamus. What do these findings mean to patients and physicians? Physicians, particularly gastroenterologists and primary care physicians, should consider the diagnosis of cannabinoid hyperemesis in patients who present with cyclic nausea and vomiting. Also, patients are not uncommonly resistant to the idea that cannabis is responsible for their symptoms. And it should also be noted that symptoms may not resolve until the patient has stopped using cannabis for several months. What are the take-home points of this article? One, when physicians are evaluating patients with cyclic nausea and vomiting, can cannabinoid hyperemesis should be considered as a diagnosis, and this might obviate the need for costly and invasive testing in certain patients. Number two, when suspecting the diagnosis of cannabinoid hyperemesis, Physicians should pose the question of whether or not hot water bathing relieves the symptoms of nausea and vomiting in their patients. Number three, improvement in symptoms may take several months given the fact that cannabis remains in the body for a long period of time. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on health care at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.